Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, The New Order. So, um, I completely, apparently did not save the Ireland campaign. I, I, I could have sworn 100% that I saved. Apparently, I just didn't. So, we're just going to start a brand new campaign. Today, we're going to play against Germany. I, I'm not too sure what path exactly we're going to be taking during the Civil War in, I think, about two years. If I remember correctly, I believe it's, like, late 63. No idea what path we're going to be going for. I, I was thinking, like, maybe we just go as, you know, evil as possible and just go all out. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. Because I, I know they had at some point... Well, actually, I don't know if it was actually ever in the game. But I, I know that they were planning on having the, like, the DSR. Which I don't even remember what it stood for. But it, that was supposed to be, like, also, like, a crazy path. But I don't think it's actually in the game. Anyways, anyways. Let's get started here with our introduction, and honestly, this might take up half the episode. But hey, you're tuning into a new order series. You knew what you were signing up for. You knew there'd be reading, so don't act surprised, okay? In all of history, many men have come close to dominating Europe. Augustus Caesar, Charles V, Napoleon. Yet no man or nation has ever laid their enemies low so decisively nor governed with such evil a purpose as Adolf Hitler and the Gu... The Gross Germans Reich, which I... Look, I'm going to butcher a lot of German names in here. I don't speak German. With the world prostrated before her, Germany is the master of Europe. The true extent of her power stretches far beyond her borders, for no corner of the earth is, was left untouched by the Reich's victory or its consequences. Free to indulge in its national socialist dogma, the Reich has spent the last decade striving for its brutal final goals. The making of an Aryan utopia and the exploitation and destruction of countless Untermeschen in the, in the way. As Hitler ages, though, the troubles of the system grow impossible to ignore. It's constant structurally cruel uh, paired with compliance, uh, complacent incompetence has fractured the very foundation of the nation. What happens when the last bonds which tie the right together fades away? Germany's greatest test would come on September 1st, 1939, when the Jackboots of the Weimar stormed across the Polish border. Within two years, the entire continent and beyond was embroiled in one of the greatest wars ever seen. What stunned most observers more than the sheer scale, however, was the utter and total success of the Axis in its fights against the rest of the world. Poland was the first to collapse on the, v uh, the way to the Blitzkrieg, and numerous allied nations soon followed her. Finally, two titanic struggles broke out in Europe, more brutally and devastating than any other campaign before. The gigantic battles on the Eastern Front and the slow grind of Operation Sea Lion. Even in the face of these enormous challenges, however, the Reich was unstoppable. The massive resources poured into Britain and Russia were not enough to prevent their collapse, and the atomic bomb forced America from the war soon after. Hitler, once a destitute uh, veteran of the Munich, is now all has now had all of Europe in his fist. The Reich was victorious. By the end of 1945, Germany was unquestionably master of Europe. Her empire stretched from Marseille to Archangelisk, alongside public governments in the West. Brutal Reich commissets were created in the East. Cruel colonial governments, which entwined greedy resource extraction with the final genocide goal of Liebenstrom. It was the complete economic hegemony, which further fed the bloodthirsty demonic machine, accelerating the deterioration of German dominance. Overlooked in the expenses, however, were the equally vast number of furious enemies organizing across the borders, as well as the increasing distressing financial reports and cooling diplomatic relations. All at once, the walls fell in. The, the economy collapsed. Germany's distant allies severed their ties, and the Western uh, Russian Revolutionary Front surged over the eastern frontier in unthinkable numbers. The West Russian War had begun. The West Russian War would tear away the veneer of German invincibility with all the rage it deserved. The hair uh, revered at home for so long was routed by German Untermints armed with inferior equipment and less resources. As the spearheads of the West, as the West Russians blew apart resistance, the East collapsed in total chaos. When German forces fled to Pottersburg, the Thousand Year Reich teetered into oblivion. Or uh, on oblivion. In such desperate environment, it was no surprise that the shadowy Heimlich Killer and his SS would make an attempt to seize the reins of state. However, the year broke up the conspiracy before it had a chance to fully fire, leading to destruction and exile of much of the SS to the Ostenstadt and turning to the tide to the east. The front, exhausted by the, its push, finally ran out of steam and collapsed under the weight of the reorganized German forces. By the skin of its teeth, Germany had survived another close call. But the rod had been exposed, and it would not be removed so easily. The German Reich had survived its closest call yet, but the trouble was plagued still remained. With its eastern holdings in shambles and the economy in the gutter, it would take years for Germany's slave different economic schemes to even restore its to stagnant equilibrium. Meanwhile, the Heer used its defeats as a way to divert more of its funds to its bloated coffers while ignoring the troubles which plagued it. 
Pillar, himself weakening in strength, increasingly lost control of the four most powerful subordinates, Ormin, Speer, Goring, and Hydric. The German Eagle no longer soars, it's Charles Long, weighted down by its complete moral bankruptcy. Corruption, vanity, and wanton cruelty are the mottos of our administrations, and the increasing des uh, des uh, desperate people seek any sort of solution for their woes. The hate which the Reich exports is finally turning inwards, and all that remains is to hold the people together as a fading, senile Hitler. What will happen when his time is up? He with power. The fear of Germany and Germ uh, the fear is Germany, and Germany is a fear. That is the party line and the truth, the SADAP, set in the world and that Hitler finally confirmed in the course of his Second World War. When victory came, it did so in the glory of the Reich, which I had not seen in close to a century. Her eternal enemies beaten, crushed under the greatest war machine the world had ever seen. Hitler became the linchpin of his glory, and to this day his name is written in any mention of it, alongside those innumerable crimes committed in the past. In the process. What followed was a decade of prosperity and power, where the Reich stood as the unquestionable hegemon of the world, and utter despair and tragedy in the years after, where the, when the people saw it all crumble to dust. The fear is not there to notice it, however. Though his eyes still see and his voice still rasps, the sharpness instinct is gone, and the strength is following. It will not be long before Germany's most consequential leader, leader leaves it behind. Can I scroll down this, or is it just like cut off weirdly? Beyond Hitler's grasp lies the vast overgrowth of bureaucracy which dominates modern Germania, bloated in fat on its blood-stained treasures, and within its concrete facade lies a moral uh, morass of black backstabbing and immoral ambition. In his political viper's nest, only the smartest and strongest men can thrive. Today's establishment politics are dominated by Martin Bormann, Hitler's right-hand man, with the nose of power and a complete lack of a moral compass. His weaseling and conniving has firmly planted him as leader of the conservative majority, and he is not without challenge, however. Albert Speer, a, sh a sharp schemer in his own right, has turned himself into the leader of those in Germany who cry out for reform to their broken system. If it was all to go to plan, it would be one of these men who would become the next Führer. But every day makes it more and more clear that succession will not be so orderly. Though being outside of Germania means an ambitious politician has less opportunity to wheel and deal, the Volkshare's endless scheming mean that avoiding the morass has its own benefits. Such the idea of those who style themselves for the next Führer, dodging a swamp in favor of forging their own path to power. Her and Goring, a charismatic ace of years past, has found himself as leader of the powerful militarist faction. His popularity with the citizenry grants him a widespread appeal, something Reinhard Heinrich, deputy leader of the SS, could not be further from. His power comes from fear and shadowy backing of his superior, Heinrich Himmler. Uh, though few see him as the next Führer, that hasn't stopped him and his supporters from trying. These outside candidates surely believe in their ability to lead, but uh, it may be more prudent for them to dust off their military experience first. In the chaotic, self-devouring nature of the Reich's politics, little stands above the melee. The Hare, whose proud defenders of the Fatherland, are no exception. While they portray themselves as supreme Aryan leaders and warriors, the truth of the matter is that the armed forces are as involved in power plays and scheming as any. The modern Hare is primarily split between the moderates and the militarists, respectively led by Hans Spiedel and Friedrich Schorner. On Spiedel's side, uh, lie men like Herren von Treskow and Dietrich von Schocken, uh, unite in their opposition to the blatant tinkering of the militarist. For their part, the militarists lay claim to men like Otto Reimer and Hermann Göring, uh, driven, ambitious bloodhounds who wish to reach glory through conquest. Both sides are inexorably opposed to one another, uh, more focused on defeating their internal rivals and protecting the Reich itself. Will they truly be ready? And like I said, I said it'd be like 10 minutes. We're at like 8.5 minutes now. So we got Man on the Moon, 21 days on you, and let's like let's actually focus on like what is actually happening in Germany. By the way, um, it's entirely possible that this first episode we like don't go into January 2nd. It, it, I think that I mean okay, maybe it's not like completely likely, but we need to kind of look at like a lot of stuff right now. Okay, we have all of our unassigned divisions. I don't know if we have any units outside of Europe. We got some in Crimea, but okay, but that, that's about it. So let's split you into smaller armies, please. We will throw all of you underneath a field marshal. Uh, Heinen von Treskow? Sure, why not? Also, you can only have three to three leaders, okay. And also, you can only have, uh... I, I'm, I'm so used to, um... We'll throw you in here, one out of three. It's 24 to 12, so you can only have 12 units per general, huh? We have nine, 
13 is going to be too many. Four. Let's get you down to a little bit more reasonable. 11. But then that is going to be too many generals for a field marshal here. So I guess we're going to probably have like three field marshals would be my guess. If not actually more. Because we need you to be under a field marshal as well. I then need to shrink your army down. Have you to 12. I guess I just have to split you once, right? And that's already automatically going to be split into 12. So I can put one here. Put one unit here. Do you have like two units in here that are kind of like ass? Units cannot be disbanded? Okay. Um. So I guess we'll just get two of you guys. We'll assign you under a shitty general, and your job is just going to be to garrison Crimea. Sure, that sounds fine. Let's assign our field marshal. Goes Wagner here. Sure, why not? Follow that up by you. And I don't think these are actually assigned to the field marshals, so let's get these guys going. Throw you into a new theater, just so I don't have to think about you anymore. So our first field marshal, we're going to put you on the border with Burgundy, just because, you know, I don't think we can trust Burgundy. Next one we'll put on the border with the Italians. And then you will put on the border with... Ah! Uh, I guess, so, like, the general government should be okay. And then maybe we'll put, like, one of you on the border with uh, the Baltics here. I think this seems basically reasonable. We'll delete this plan. I'm going to be put on the border with the Swiss. But don't go into Burgundy. I don't know if we'll be able to go to war with Burgundy. I think they can rebel, if I'm remembering correctly, but... The question is, am I remembering correctly? The answer very well could be no. Okay, so it's 62. What technology do we want to get? Hospital effectiveness sounds like it could be good. Um, let's go with nuclear reactor tech. I mean, we do have a lot of technology. Enemy air support minus 8%. I mean, that sounds pretty goddamn good. Um, aside from that, don't worry about you. You're, I mean, everything here is basically, yeah, researched. Again, like, compared to what we just played as Ireland, where most of our stuff wasn't researched, going to playing a country that has essentially everything researched, that, that's quite nice. How many? We have 127 production units. I mean, yeah, I mean, this this all seems good. I'm not going to really complain about this. I guess I'll throw more into rifle production for now. Our navy, we will... Get rid of this, please. Um, floating harbor. I should find a mod that replaces this UI with something a little bit more... Good, good, a little bit more good. To put it, to, for lack of a better term. Infrastructure, you know what? How prison surprisingly, our prisons are not that great, but our hospitals. Let's get ourselves a hospital in Germania, please. Sounds good to me. How many factories do we have? Quite a bit. Okay, so let's, let's build more hospitals then. Let's build one in this province and let's build one in Ostprussian. That looks fine to me. We do have nuclear warheads because we are, you know, a major power here, which I'm happy to see. The economy, inflation 5.4%, GDP of $225 billion. I'm happy with that. A credit rating, of course, is great. I'm the one who gives out the credit scores. So, of course, it's going to be good. We are, we actually, we are running a deficit right now. We are national socialist corporatism. Centralization 75 with a possible 100. Population's growing. We're getting a lot more poor people per year. Our largest trade partner is Ukraine. With this nuclear arsenal, we could wipe out 75% of humanity. Fantastic. Okay, I mean, I, I will. I guess I'll take that. And we do have our foreign policy here as well. No current involvements. Okay, we're not involved in any, any uh, global wars. So you got push the physical cap and consumer goods. Stability minus 25%, political power gain. 
Basically, Germany, we've got a lot of penalties. Like, we are so set in our ways that we basically cannot imagine another, you know, reality. But I think it's going to be a good time for us to end off. We're 15 minutes in. And, yeah, like I said, we have not even gotten to January 2nd. But for now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, tune in next time. Have a great day and goodbye.